Hi, welcome back. This week we're going to be talking about something that's been in the news quite a lot lately. It's a bit of a double whammy because we're talking about vaccines and preventing cancer. Hello, and welcome to Sounds Healthy, a podcast of University Health System. I'm your host, Elizabeth Allen. We're here today again with Dr. Rob Sanders. He's the medical director of the PD Express Urgent Care Clinic in downtown San Antonio. Dr. Sanders, how are you doing today? Awesome. Always love coming in and talking with you about and you know our these topics that we've gone over and I love talking about vaccines, especially uh, what we're going to be talking about today. Yeah, super important. Most definitely. Today, we're going to be talking about the HPV vaccine. Yes, one of those vaccines that is still not required by law in the state of Texas, but has uh, is one of the most uh, uh, incredible new vaccines. Well, it is. I would say it's the most incredible new vaccine that we have uh, for the last decade or so. And it's been available in Texas for the last decade or so. Yeah, yes. But Texas lags behind most other places in the country for HPV vaccination rates. And Bear County lags behind the rest of Texas. What gives with that? The reason I think that we ha- we see lower vaccination rates for HPV in Texas is because we're still learning about the vaccine in some ways. And what I mean by that is that the general public uh, is still kind of just hearing about it maybe for the first time and not really understanding what it is and, and what it really is, what, what the real purpose of the vaccine is. Do parents ever talk to you about it? Do they have particular areas of concern? Yeah. So I think the first concern that parents have, and so first of all, let me frame this a little bit. So the HPV vaccine, it vaccinates against human papilloma virus. And to basically to, to keep that, keep it real simple and not too many doctory terms, it's, it's, a, it's a virus that can actually cause cancer cells to form in very like sensitive areas and places that, in all honesty, like we don't catch very quickly because we don't have a lot of symptoms until it's usually really late in the game. Uh, and at that point, sometimes these cancers can be so bad that people can die from them. So this, that's, it, that's the intrinsic power of the vaccine is that we're vaccinating against a virus that causes cancer. And this is exciting because we, you know, we've seen this vaccine over the last decade in some other countries and how incredibly effective it is. Uh, so you're thinking of, uh, I'll, let me give you a quick example. So in Scotland, there's a, a recent study that just came out of Scotland with 10 years of data about the HPV vaccine. Over 100,000 people were in this, included in this study. And they essentially require the vaccine at, a, at a, between like 11 and 13 years of age, I believe, uh, for all of the, uh, the peop- all the children that live in that country. What they saw, in the, well, excuse me, in these certain parts of the country, what they saw in these parts of the country with these very high vaccination rates was a 80% decrease in disease. This is the power of vaccine, right? So, you know, you give an, you, you know, you, you, this, is a, this is a big intervention, a, meaning a big, a big thing that we do that causes a huge impact. And well, 80% decrease in cancer is immense. There's nothing, there's very few other things out there that can, can prevent, there's nothing really else out there that can prevent cancer like this can. That's a staggering percentage. Yeah. That, so HPV is is really really common. Yeah, it's it is. You know, I I would say that you know, from my understanding, ninety eight percent of the adult population will have some form of HPV. And to give people a better understanding of it, HPV uh, is there are a number of different forms of it. There are nine that they have studied over the years that show to have the highest incidence of causing these types of cancers in people, both men and women, I want to add, okay? And they created this vaccine that is very effective against these nine types that are the most common ones that cause cancer. So taking it back a step again, 98% of the adult population is at some point found to have some form of HPV, whether it be the cancer-forming kind or the non-cancer-forming kind. Obviously, the majority of them are non-cancer-forming, right? But 
there is a still a, a huge risk of having these cancer-forming types of HPV. And this is where the power of this vaccine comes in. Can you think, I can't honestly think about giving my child, my, I have two daughters, a, 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 a more awesome gift in regards to a vaccine than giving them an 80% lower risk of having cervical cancer in their life. This is a, this is a two-shot deal, two and done, if you're less than the age of 15. If you're old, over the age of 15, you need three shots. But just think about that. You, have, you get two shots in your early teenage years or even in junior high, and you're done for life. And you have that protection against cancer for the rest of your life. And that goes, again, for boys and girls. That is such a gift. I think so. I really do. Two quick shots. And going back to your initial question about kind of what are the things that parents get kind of nervous about and what are their questions about the vaccine. So, you know, when you, when when we talk about vaccines and particularly the HPV vaccine, they talk about um, the pain related to the injection. And I know it sounds crazy, but there's there's a, a lot of chatter out there about how HPV makes people pass out. OK, it, it, it's, it's, I, it's honest to goodness. It's out there. You, you, you Google this and you'll you'll see a lot of chatter out there about this. I'd pass out to avoid cancer. I, yeah, I just right. Would. I'd be OK. Right. Yeah, exactly. And, and honestly. So, again, you know, when, when we look at, um, you know, uh, these these issues that people have with uh, vaccines. OK, you know, these side effects, I guess you could call them or uh, uh, adverse reactions. OK, there's no Nothing that we have seen that actually shows that shot causes you to pass out, okay? It just happens sometimes, okay? And I think it's fair to say that with any vaccine that you would get in your at any age, more, more likely in your young teenage years, you might have a reaction like that. So rare, so incredibly rare. There was a point, though, real quick, I was t- uh, um, for a while where – you know, because uh, this was kind of noted even even in the literature, okay, at some point about maybe there being a relationship, we, we at the very beginning of, of, of giving this vaccine in the clinics, we had actually we had to have keep we had to hold patients for 15 minutes after the vaccine to make sure they didn't pass out. So I mean, we've been doing this for 10 years now. We now know that that is just that just does really generally never happens anymore. So it's really nothing that you really need to be worried about. And that's. The, that's one of the main concerns. Well, I mean, think about it. You know, you don't want your kid to have a painful experience. And goodness, you wouldn't certainly want to see your 12 or 13-year-old pass out on the floor, right? No. And, and again, it's framing the information that you have, right? It's understanding the risk and the benefit, right? You know, what? Do, why does my 11-year-old need to be protected against a virus that causes cancer? And more important, more particularly, and this is the next point, why does my 11-year-old need to be protected against a virus that you get from having sex? Aha. Uh-huh. Ah, yeah, exactly. So... Putting sex in an 11 year or 12 year old boy or girl, you know, in the same, you know, in the same sentence is scary. Yeah. Right. Yeah. That would freak a parent out Absolutely. if they're like, I'm not ready for this, uh, and, regardless and of whether they are. And I'm not going to lie to you. Like, you know, when my daughter, my daughter's 13 now. So when she had her va- first vaccines, I took a breath and I was like, this is not about her having sex. OK. You know, those decisions are things that we as parents spend a lot of time talking with our kids about, helping them to make good decisions about that, right? Hopefully. Being su- right? Exactly. If, if they'll even talk to you about uh, well, it. Th- well, so that's why you catch them early, right? <laughs> so when they're 11 or 12, you can still kind of – you can still rein them in and have a little discussion with them about it. Once they get closer to 13, 14, and you know, uh, all you all know as well as I do, you know, they're going to be on their phones. They're going to want to hang out with their friends. They're going to be out, you know, doing sports and activities. So you don't get those opportunities. But regardless of whether you're ready to have the talk with them, you're giving them a vaccine against cancer. Exactly. And and people often say, "Why so young?" It's it's more effective. They the they, they in these studies that I had mentioned before regarding how effective the vaccine actually is, they actually saw that the earlier you give the vaccine, the more effective it is. So that's the first reason. Mm -hmm. The second reason is is that if we get these vaccines done early, meaning before the age of 15, we have to do one less vaccine. So it's a two vaccine series instead of a three vaccine series. So if you're worried about causing your child pain, 
Yeah. You, get, you get to skip a shot if you do it sooner. Exactly. That's exactly right. So get those vaccines done early before the age of 15. Get them done at that at, at, uh, even you know before the age of 13. The vaccine is licensed down to the age of 11 or even younger, potentially down to the age of nine years old, depending on, on the vaccine that you get. So having those discussions when you're around 11 is usually kind of in our pediatric office where we're starting to have those discussions. And again, for, again, for those two reasons. One, because it's less shots, okay? Two shots versus three, all right? The two shots need to be at least six months apart. They can be more. It's not a problem. The second reason is that they've seen in these studies that there is, they are more effective, okay, than when they are given early than when we give them later. And you're exactly right. You bring a really good point. You might not be ready to have those talks about sex, the birds and the bees yet. That's totally okay, okay? Understanding that, that it's on the table, though, starting to want to think about having those discussions at 11, 12, though, is important. So we, we give the vaccine early because it's, one, been proven to be more effective, that there isn't, again, looking at cervical cancer and other specific types of cancers related to HPV, like throat cancer, they have seen an 80% decrease in, in, in these studies uh, in, in these specific types of cancer caused by HPV. That's incredible and something that your child will, have, will, will be able to be hopefully protected from their whole life. And that's, um, that's something also when you, you talk about the different types of cancer. This applies equally to boys and girls, correct? Absolutely. And it was at first it was they were encouraging it for girls, but uh, uptake rates are slightly better for girls than boys too. So, I mean, that might be a, something that people need to think a little bit more broadly about. Super good point. Since the HPV vaccine has come on to the market and been here again for about a decade, there's been a lot of talk. There's a lot of focus on cervical cancer, at least initially, right? And now we recognize it's so important that both boys, girls, men, women, they both are getting the vaccine. We're protecting girls by giving it to boys, but we're protecting Everybody. Everybody by them getting it. Yeah, true. So, so in regards to boys getting the vaccine, it's important for them to get it because it's a sexually transmitted infection. The, t- the, the virus, uh, HPV, is, is transmitted by close intimate contact. So it's really important for boys and girls to get it so that everybody is protected uh, from the HPV virus that causes cervical, throat, cancers, genital warts, and sometimes anal cancers. These are the things that we're really trying to prevent with this vaccine. So both boys and girls really should be getting this vaccine early because it's more effective, it's less shots, it's, uh, it's the best thing you can do for your kid. Well, and one of the things that has come up is that uh, primary care doctors don't always offer this along with all the usual vaccines. Yeah, that's a tough one. And being uh, being a pediatrician, uh, and, you know, it's it's kind of a tough pill to swallow, right? And because we, I know we know it's out there, and we know that um, we know that that some pediatricians and some doctors, some family practice doctors, they take care of children. They still don't have uh, all the information about the vaccine. But what I what I what I can say to that is that it's improving. I know both the, the state of Texas and Texas Pediatric Society. Uh, have been working really hard on getting information out to doctors. And we're in this phase of the vaccine acceptance where we're probably at a little bit of a low because uh, of the whole, the, A, the understanding of what the vaccine does, and B, the community kind of not embracing the vaccine yet. And my my hope is that moving forward now is that do, that, the, our, that the primary care doctors in the community are embracing this, having the discussion with uh, families and offering the vaccine. But as a pediatrician, I can see how busy things get. So walking in and, and talking to a family about a whole host of things and then saying, OK, these are the vaccines that we need to get done for school and then framing it like, OK, and then this one is also so this one's optional kind of immediately puts into a person's head, okay, well, I don't have to do it today. And why would I give my kid another painful shot? So that, again, goes back to all the things that we've talked about, the risk benefit, the recognizing that we're hopefully reducing the, uh, the incidence of cervical cancer in the community and in your child by up to 80%. Those are the thoughts that we have to be having when we're, when we're in the office, both doctors and parents, right? Yeah, and so... Um 
the the parent can certainly bring it up too and ask for it. I hope so, and I think and, and again, get us getting some information out here, and the more information that we can get out about how important and effective this vaccine is, will hopefully. Uh, give the parents uh, some information to go into the office with and have that discussion with the doctor with, with their child. Because the parent is the advocate for the child and can also show the child how to be an advocate for themselves. Absolutely. And at this age, we're, we're teaching uh, our children how to start to advocate for themselves. And I'd say that it's a lifelong thing that we're you know, teaching our children. But at the age of 11 or 12, when the kids are go- are in junior high, uh, it's this huge transition in life where they're starting to pull away a little bit and they're starting to do things on their own. And they're going to look to us, look to their parents for a lot of these uh, skills that they need to start to, to be more independent. So this is, this is a twofer in another way. This is protecting your child from cancer and teaching them to be an adult. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, making those har- sometimes harder decisions. You know, now having uh, seen the vaccine uh, over the last decade and how incredible the data is coming out now and showing how effective it is, it's for me, it's a no-brainer now for my kids, okay? But for a lot of people still, learning about the vaccine, because it's, again, not something that's talked about a lot still, and, but more and more, um, advocating for your child uh, is something that we can all do as our parent here. That's fantastic. We can put um, some information online when we post the podcast about um, where to, how to get uh, low-cost vaccines for your children, and also a couple of those wonderful studies that show how effective it's been. Absolutely. Absolutely. And I'd love to see the rates of the vaccine go up in our community because like we've talked about before with vaccines, there is something called a herd effect, right? So as more people in a community get the vaccine, and that goes with all the vaccines that we give, the less of these diseases or and now in this case, cancers that we're going to see in the community. And that was really... Uh, well shown in these studies overseas. The ultimate act of parenting love. That's right. No, this is a gift for sure. No doubt. Well, thanks a lot for your time today, Dr. Sanders. Thanks for having me. You've been listening to Sounds Healthy, a production of University Health System in San Antonio, Texas, hosted and produced by me, Elizabeth Allen. Recording and audio production by Mark Greenberg. Executive producer, Lenny Kirkman. Music